let's get that audio sync out of the way what is up guys it is your boy Ritter from Watch Society today is going to be a Q&A session the last Q&A session I've done on this channel was one year ago literally exactly one year from today so I've asked you guys to submit some questions whatever way you would like to put them through whether it be Instagram email or YouTube I've taken most of them we're not going to be able to answer all because they were overwhelming there were over hundreds and hundreds of questions you guys asked for another one so here we are a ton of questions let's jump right into them <laughs> So our first question is coming from Watch You Want 86. Watch You Want 86 basically says you've got 100K and need four watches. Which sport, classic, complication, and daily beater? So first of all, you didn't specify the currency. I'm just gonna go with the assumption that we're talking about US dollars. You also didn't specify whether this budget is allocated for current market prices or retail prices. So I'm just gonna speak of the retail price. I'll put a counter over here so we don't go over budget. So for the sport category, I'm gonna go with something like a 15500. This is my selection so I would pick it in fact over a 15202 for a sport watch because of its robustness and size and maybe I'm biased about it because I've got one on my wrist I'm not really sure but that's what I would do for sport watches for the classic and complication I would actually merge that into one so I would go with something like a Patek Philippe Caltrava 5212 that has basically a weekly calendar that is a GMT that is a it's everything basically the complication there is ridiculous the font on the dial on the other hand does not take the classicness, classicness? Can you say classicness? I don't, you can, that's not a word, right? But what I'm trying to say, the font does not take itself seriously. It's like a funky, fun font. And it gives the watch basically a little bit of a sporty element to it. I had the opportunity to look at one that actually belongs to a friend of mine, and it's a fantastic pick. But if you want strictly classic watches, you don't really care about the complication. Patch two the classic subject that we're on. I can go with something like a 6119R if I want that rose gold tone or the yellow gold tone. I don't know if they actually make them in yellow gold, but I think I've seen some before that are rose gold. If you want that shine on the classic plus the complication, it would be definitely a recommendation. On the other hand, for a daily beater, I would definitely go with something like a Rolex, like a, any Rolex really, but for me personally, I would go with a Rolex Daytona, something like an 116500 LN. It's a daily beater. It's a Rolex, nothing beats the robustness of Rolex, and you just can't go wrong with it at any given point in time. And watch you want, there goes your 100K spent in one minute. Now for our next question, man, I love the sound of those space bar clicks. Let's do it again. Our next question comes from Steve's GP underscore best watch stores in Dubai. Now I'm guessing that you're talking here about aftermarket dealers and not brands. And when I look for an aftermarket dealer, I think their existence is important again, because if you're looking for a discontinued watch or something that is, you know, you cannot get at retail and you want it right now, you want to establish basically a good relationship with an aftermarket dealer. For me, when I look for one, I look for trust, I look for reliability. I look for basically if I pick up a watch, I'm able to go back to them change it, maybe trade it up for something else in the future if my likings had changed, or if there's any problem with the watch period, then they should have at least a service center in-house that could look at it. And for that, I would definitely go with something like Luxury Souk. They've got the inventory, they've got the service center, and in the same time, they're reliable. Like I. I personally would buy a watch from them without any headaches and that would be my preference. In Dubai, we've actually got a lot every day. Apparently, there is a new aftermarket dealer popping up, someone operating from his balcony or his car or just a box. You hear of these guys, I wouldn't go to them, but I would highly recommend Luxury Soup if you're looking for that discontinued model or if you don't have a profile, say with the authorized dealer and there is no chances of you getting your desired model, then I would go to someone like them and yes, do the premium and potentially get it from there. I hope that answers your question. Now for our next question, our next question comes from I am Cy Gray and KO Fitness Studio. These guys are both buddies of mine. Cy Gray is someone that I could potentially be his neighbor if I ever move to Holland. I've got plans of moving to Holland. Essentially, this is someone that I started talking watches with. I still talk watches to date, but we talk about other things. KO Fitness, on the other hand, is an elite exclusive member only gym that is very, very successful. And the owner is a good friend of mine as well. So the questions are kind of like interlinked and that's why I merged them together. So how many watches 
are there right now in your collection? This is a question coming from Cy Gray. What is the state of the collect? When is the state of the collection video coming? So Cy Gray, I would say about 34-ish. No, I'm just kidding, about 25 pieces. There is a state of the collection video that I'm working on, but I do want to release this video once I receive my last piece. It's a bit of a surprise. It's a piece that I've been waiting for for a long time. Hopefully it kicks in sometime soon. Once it's in, I'm going to have a state of the collection video so look out for that ko fitness studios question i think two max three watches collection is perfect what do you think is the perfect number for me the perfect number is three watches i think anything above three watches is basically you buying with your head buying basically for the future collectability aspect of it or if you want to park your money and avoid inflation and and maybe that's what's driving you to that fourth piece this is mine my own opinion but for me personally three watches a daily beater a classic and a sport watch that's really all what you need our next question comes from spiritual soul 108 he says are you originally from dubai or did you move for a career well i am from the hearts of africa originally from Sudan. Sudan before it split into two countries so that was literally the center of Africa and yes I have moved to Dubai for a career 11 years ago and yeah so I moved here for a job so our next question is coming from I am Disarosi your profession okay so essentially I moved to the UAE 11 years ago really patching the sort of end user technical requirements to vendors technical vendors that could respond to these requirements so I was sort of like the glue that kind of connects both the business user and the technology vendor that delivers the product or the software or whatever it may be together. So I've done that for a very long time working for a government entity here in the UAE and I've now established it as my own practice. So it's been over two years that I do these services basically and I cover the region and Latin America and some other side of the world as well. So I actually work for myself. I own a small consultancy boutique that does exactly that, digital transformation, etc. And it's been treating me well and I cannot complain about it. Now, my next question is coming from this is not really a question, more like a comment. So, okay, watch style. Sorry, Rida, I know already everything from you that is correct so okay watch style has basically been a supporter of the channel ever since watch society was on 100 subscribers so big shout out to him for his support our next question is sort of like three questions clubbed into one coming from c johnson so his first part or the first question is what's on what's one watch brand you would never wear and why i'll give you three no disrespect to any historical aspect about it panerais are just not my thing even on the 42k size is not something that i'd like to wear i wouldn't wear a hublot and i would definitely i mean if you pay me i would not wear a jacob and call not their epic x not their astronomias nothing at all if you give it to me for free i'll probably sell it and get rid of it i don't respect the brand i don't respect their watchmaking and i have nothing absolutely nothing to do with them even the experience that you actually get at the boutique is somehow challenging so for me honestly i'm not a customer and i will never be a customer for that the second part of the question is what is your holiest grail watch and why and with no shadow of that that would be the 15202 any variation of the 15202 whether it be the stainless steel and the blue dial or the rose gold that i absolutely love i mean everything about that watch really their historical aspect the way it wears the profile it is my grail watch with no shadow of a doubt third part of the question is how did you end up in dubai and where in the u.s are you from i am in dubai for work well i was in dubai i came originally for work and i continue to work and now i own my own business over here and i'm not from the US so I've got a lot of family in different parts of the US from Fort Lauderdale to Minneapolis just name it New York but I'm not from the US I went to an American school I went to an American University but I'm not from the US next we've got a question from S LM Sag. SLM Sag, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. For 40 to 50,000 dirhams, what is the best choice for a Rolex watch if new or pre owned? So I could tell you in that range, 40 to 50, you're talking about 10,000 to $13,000. With no shot of that, I would pick up a GMT at retail if I can, a BLNR or a Pepsi or any variation really of the GMT that you can get. Now, if this is going to be pre owned because there is a premium, you can't just simply get them at retail we all know that very well so for that reason i would take the middle budget something like 45,000 dirhams that's going to be around 11.5 
I would pick any of the new subs, any of the one, two reference, whether it be the no date sub, the 12, 40, 60, or the date Submariner. I hope that helps uh, in your selection. Our next question is coming from EZ underscore ER underscore said underscore Zan underscore done. Very cool name, said then done. Okay, I got it. How do you like the AP code 1159? Mark my words when I say this. I think this is going to become a future collectible. They're very difficult now to get at retail. I wouldn't say really difficult to get right now, but you have to, you won't find them, right? Like, especially when you talk about the chronograph with the black fume doll and a rose gold case with the new AP strap. This is the one that I actually had the opportunity to try when I bought the 15450 blue doll. It was out of Bahrain, it was the boutique over there, so I've established a relationship with them and they supported me basically with the 15450. I had the opportunity there to try the Code 1159 and it's a really, really nice watch. It wears perfect, I personally love it and I would maybe get one in the future. Today, I'm not a customer for it. I don't know if I would pick it at retail or maybe from the secondary market if the price is a little bit better. I'm really not keeping a close tab on the 1159, but a very beautiful watch, and it's going to be a collectible with no shadow of a doubt. I see that happening. The next question is coming from Phil Past 99 Best investment, AP Royal Oak Rose Gold Chrono or Platinum Daytona? I mean, this is a big, really, debate, you know, if watches are actually a good investment or not. But if you rephrase the question and ask me, would I rather park my money on a watch as opposed to keeping it in the bank to avoid inflation and all that stuff? Yes, I would absolutely do that. Would I go for a Rose Gold Chrono or a Platinum Daytona? For me personally, I would definitely go with a Platinum Daytona just because it's less flashy, but both are actually very, very interesting pieces that are skyrocketing today in value. So you can't go wrong with either. Our next question is coming from Moody Nahadi. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Moody. Would you consider to wear micro brands? Luis Erard is one brand I would like to explore. Their excellence collection is something I have been looking at and doing some research about. I would also look at an FP John Eleganti 48 in titanium. This is something that I would wear. That basically wraps the Q&A. If you guys want me to keep it as a weekly thing, no problem at all. I would love to do that. Feel free to shoot your questions on email, Instagram, or even leave them in the comment section down below of this video, and I'd be more than happy to respond or maybe consolidate the interesting ones and do a video about them. This is something that I'm happy to explore with you. It's a two-way stream. That's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.